the day began overcast and foggy, but now it's perfect at Candlestick Park as the San Francisco 49ers entertain the New Orleans Saints. A new complexion, really, for the 49ers. I'm Pat Summerall here with John Madden, as usual. New complexion, I say more aggressive for their defensive unit, and they've added another weapon in Deion Sanders. And that's a real weapon. Anytime you have a chance to get a great football player on your team, it's going to help your team. And Deion Sanders is really going to help this 49er defense. They're just going to put him in that right corner, tell him to take someone, and then they can blitz more, they can zone away from him. But if they're going to have any problems today, Pat, I think it's going to be on the offensive side because we know that Steve Young is a great quarterback and we know that he has Jerry Rice and John Taylor and Brent Jones and Ricky Waters but I'll tell you that group up front that has to do the block and I'm not sure who some of these guys are. Well this is the way they began the year. Harry Boatswain has now replaced Harris Barton. Derek Deese is now the right guard. Chris Dahlman is the left guard and Frank Pollock in a development that just happened before game time. Steve Wallace out Pollock is now the left tackle so we'll just have to wait and see how they perform. We were talking to Jim Everett yesterday and he said in order to beat the 49ers we have to keep the ball we have to stay on the field meaning his offensive unit. Yeah and the way they have to do it is with the pass you know for years you always thought of the Saints as a as a running team a good defense and of course a great kicker but now with Jim Everett you know it's a passing team Jim Everett has to do it today and one of the weapons he has is a good friend of Deion Sanders in fact an ex teammate Michael Haynes. We'll have a chance first to see that great kicker, Morton Anderson. How many games has he won over the years for the Saints, including last week? Anderson's kick sails down to Dexter Carter at about the two and a half yard line. And Carter gets out to about the 28 before he's brought down there. The Saint lineup. On defense, we'll look at it in a moment. First of all, San Francisco, as John said, quarterback by Steve Young. In front of him, that remade offensive line, Bart Oates, remains the only steady, and even he is due. But the weapons are back there with Steve Young. Waters, Logan, Rice, Taylor, and Brent Jones. First and 10, San Francisco at their own 27. Jones in motion. On first down, Steve Young will throw it, and there's a flag on the first play. Ron Blum. Ball start prior to the snap, five yards, repeat first down. Jerry Rice, a little too anxious. Ron Blum is the referee. Referees and his entire staff all clad in the throwback referee uniforms with uh, the smaller hats first and 15 Jones in motion the other way Young will throw it behind the intended receiver Brent Jones the Saint defense John Madden was saying a minute ago they've been uh, sort of redone Johnson Miller and Wayne Martin playing very well the front three Turnbull Williams Mills and Connor and in the secondary Carl Lee and Jimmy Spencer the corners Lumpkin and Buck the two deep backs but they'll add defensive backs and move them around as the afternoon passes second and 15 Waters behind Young Floyd is the other running back Fake to Waters. For John Taylor. You know it's coming. And I'll tell you the biggest thing about that play, Pat, is excellent pass protection. We know they have the quarterback. We know they have the receivers. But watch the time on this first pass that Steve Young had. Watch the pass protection here. It's a little fake to Ricky Waters, but he has time to look, to look, to look to find John Taylor on that deep crossing pattern. No one runs crossing patterns better than the 49ers. That fake just froze those defensive rushers for the Saints. First down, Waters. Ricky Waters to the 30. Knocked out of bounds at the Saint 30. Just inside by Vince Buck. 
And he had a heck of a block by Derek Deese. Derek Deese is a right guard, and you're going to see him. He's going to pull here and make the block here, and Ricky Waters gets right in behind number 63. Watch 63. Boom, right there. He knocks his guy out. Ricky Waters is right in behind Deese, and he breaks right off the block. Harry Boatswain also involved in the pulling, and he too got an excellent block. Waters again. Cut down by James Williams. You know, one of the things Sam Mills was saying last night, Pat, is that we have to stop the 49ers run. We have to stop Ricky Waters, but we have to stop him early because he gets too excited when he does something well. And he said that sometimes you get the feeling that the whole 49er team plays off of Ricky Waters' excitement. Sam Mills, too small, too short. All those things they've always said about him, but he keeps getting the job done. Excellent game last week. Jones in motion. Young is very, just barely got rid of it. Ricky Waters, the intended receiver, Steve Young had no time that time. Yeah, one of the things that we see the pressure, we have Turnbull from the outside. You have Joe Johnson, the rookie. He's going to come up inside of Turnbull. See, 94, he just beat Dahlman right there. He was the second guy, and I mean, that was like a jailbreak. He oh, had double boy. pressure from the right side, single pressure from the left side. There was no place for Steve Young to go on that play. He did well not to lose yardage. Waters, the lone setback. Young back to throw it again. Protecting good again. Gets to Waters. Waters cut down at about the 25. About a four yard pickup. Wayne Martin. You know, for all the things that the 49ers have done well, and you look at Steve Young and you know that, and, and Jerry Rice breaking records, John Taylor, a great receiver, Brent Jones, and all that, their, their running game really hasn't been what they wanted, and Ricky Waters is a little frustrated. He was very frustrated when we talked to him yesterday. He was saying, we don't even work on the running game. This is Brian, the rookie kicker from 43 yards out, plenty of distance. And he's good, and the 49ers, again, as they so often do, score the first time they have the ball. They lead 3 nothing. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by American Honda, who has been making quality automobiles in America for the past 11 years. By Intel. Look for the Intel Inside Pentium processor symbol to get the best performance for all your PC software. By Levi's loose-fitting jeans. And by Sierra. It's not just antifreeze, it's safety freeze. Doug Bryan's kickoff is airborne. Handled by the dangerous Tyrone Hughes. It wasn't so dangerous that time as the 49er coverage led by Derek Lavelle was down in a hurry. Jim Everett, the quarterback. In front of him, a big group that is starting to come together. The offensive line led by William Rowe. And the men who handle the ball, Derek Brown and Derek Ned. The two deep backs, Haynes, Early, and Herb Smith, the receivers. They will open with two tight ends, two wide receivers, one back. Everett gets it outside to Herb Smith, about eight. Let's look at the 49er defense. We talked about the new attitude and the rebuilding of that defense that's taken place in front. Ricky Jackson at defensive end. He'll rush a lot. Also back off some when he plays the linebacker spot. Stubblefield and Young solid in the middle. Behind them, Norton, Plummer, and Lee Woodall. In the secondary, Deion Sanders at right corner. Hanks, McDonald, and Davis. Second and one. That's Wall as in motion. Behind the line of scrimmage is Derek Brown. Hit by Ricky Jackson, the ex-great New Orleans Saints. So many years he had there. Well, and the 49ers wanted to be more aggressive and attack the line of scrimmage, Pat. And that last play, they really did attack the line of scrimmage. Because you're going to see the inside linebackers come in. You're going to see them taking that plug. Ricky Jackson taking on the tight end, just playing off him. 
Wesley Walls trying to block him. Jackson would have none of that. Third and three, and Everett drops back in the spread formation. Starts a man in motion. Everett back to throw. It's the pass out to early for a safe first down. Deion Sanders made the stop. You know, that's the third time in a row, Pat, that the 49ers blitz. Ken Norton came on that play. He came on the first down play in the play pass, too. So one of the things I think the 49ers defense do, we talked about having Deion Sanders, they can be more aggressive. And two, I think they plan to put pressure on Jim Everett and do it early. Almost everybody around the league feels that if you put pressure on Everett, he'll throw it to you once in a while. Derek Brown, the ball carrier, hit by Gary Plummer. Yeah, they tried to run that counter tray where you pull both the offside guard and offside tackle, and Plummer is just going to sneak inside him. And you watch as they pull to this way, to this side, then Plummer comes and just sneaks right in behind those blocks. They're going to start the pulling the offside guard and tackle. And then Plummer comes this way and he sneaks right in behind as Derek Brown was trying to cut off a block. That's a veteran linebacker at work. Second and 12. Everett again. We'll put it in. Well, I thought a passing situation, but the running situation is so far a minus. Derek Ned was the ball carrier, hit by Dana, Dana Stubblefield and Bryant Young. Yeah, Brian Young, the, the rookie number one draft choice, he got that penetration, and that's the thing you have to stop. You see, the two tackles here are very good tackles, and they get penetration, and the Saints are trying to run right in that area. Watch him. You see, they just get off their blocks, and boom, right there. The first guy there was Bryant Young. He's going to be a heck of a player in this league. That's a solid middle for San Francisco. Those two tackles, both young, both very strong. Third down. Everett. Good throw, but not enough for a first. As Quinn Early had to come back to make the catch. Deion Sanders was right on him. Deion Sanders, I think, by having good coverage, really forced Quinn Early to break that pattern off before he got to the first down marker. Barnhart back to punt for the Saints. Dexter Carter back deep. Number 35 for San Francisco. Very little wind. At Candlestick Park, which is highly unusual, as you know. Almost blocked, in fact, maybe partial. Out of bounds at about the 20 yard line, where the 49ers will take over just inside the 20. 3 0 49ers. So far, a little success by the Saints rushing offense in past weeks. And today, so far, minus four. And they're hitting the 49ers on a week where the 49ers are starting Deion Sanders and their defensive coordinator, Ray Rhodes, wants to be more aggressive, and so far he has been. Waters on first down got about half the distance to a first down. I think one thing Mike Shanahan, Pat, calling the plays for the 49ers, has to realize that with this new offensive line in fact they don't have a guy there that, that started for him last year that he better mix in some run because an offensive lineman always wants to do some run blocking you can't just pass protect all day and when he runs he's helping this line second and four they're going to throw it the pass is intercepted intended for rice Intercepted by James Williams. And the Saints will take it over in pretty good shape at the 49er 32. Steve Young was trying to get it beyond Williams. And I don't know if he sees him. It's a zone defense. And you're going to see number 90, James Williams. He's just coming out. He just has the flat. He's floating out. He's looking at Steve Young. Steve Young was trying to throw that crossing pattern. I don't know that he saw Williams. Or if he did see him, he wanted to get it over his head. 
I think he thought Williams was going out with the with Brent Jones and he came back and he just stopped he was going with Brent Jones yeah. he was watching Brent Jones and he just stopped and read the ball first down Saints at the 49 and 32 Everett back to throw it Everett to Haynes and Haynes to about the 14 stopped by Eric Davis I think the Saints were talking about last night is they have to get the ball more to Michael Haynes that Quinn Early had kind of become the Jim Everett's favorite receiver but Mike Haynes is one of the fastest receivers in the league and when you have speed out there anytime he gets his hands on the ball there is a chance that he can score so you want to get his hands on the ball a lot first and ten Derek Ned now gets behind Everett no one was there for a while. He's the lone setback. Everett with time. Swings it to Wesley Walls, the ex 49er. Down to about the 10. I think he's the guy that Jim Mora was really impressed with as they picked up Wesley Walls, like you said, an ex 49er. When Walls was the 49ers, you always seemed to be hurt. And uh, uh, when Jim Mora got him, he said, We really didn't know exactly what we were going to. Yet, but he's probably been one of our most pleasant surprises of this year. He's six six and about two fifty. So plenty of Wesley Walls to throw to. Everett throws it away. Pressure on Everett by Brian Young, who took him down, and on the way down, he let go of it. Yeah, and it's those two defensive tackles again. You see those two inside tackles, number 94, Dana Stubblefield, 97, Bryant Young. They're the guys right there. They flush him out, and then they hit him just as he throws the ball. They like just, you said, he was just throwing that away. They just overpowered the people blocking them. Third and seven. Jim Morris said he challenged his inside his center and two guards because he said these are two of the best tackles in the league. And so far, they haven't risen to that challenge. Here comes the 49er blitz. Everett reads it. Gets the pass complete down to Torrance Small. That'll be enough for St. First down. Hey, and Norton came free on that one. Watch Ken Norton. He's going to come from this outside right here. No one's going to block him at all. You see, he's coming free. Now Everett knows that he better get rid of that ball. <laughs> and he did. He got rid of it quickly and very efficiently. A very good throw from Everett. Yeah, you know, that's tough when someone is coming at you unblocked and he's coming towards the side that you're throwing to. First and goal at the three. Not there. Derek Brown, no gain. Dennis Brown underneath the pile. And I say one thing that this 49er defense today is is attacking the line of scrimmage with their defensive linemen and the linebackers a lot more than they have either in the in the preseason or the first part of this season. It looks as if the Saints and Everett are going to move the ball. It's going to have to be in the air because they've got nothing going running. That was Ray Rhodes the defensive coordinator who it's his nature to be aggressive. Everett, and again nothing. Derek Brown might have lost the yard. Plummer, again. And that's the thing we were talking about, Ray Rhodes. This is Ray Rhodes right here, Pat, the defensive coordinator who come over from Green Bay. And the thing that, that he was a little frustrated, he felt that they hadn't been attacking, that they hadn't been doing these things. But watch Gary Plummer on there. I mean, the ball is snapped, and boom, he's getting right in that St. backfield as the whole 49er defense has been so far. Ray Rhodes had been here. When Mike Holmgren went to Green Bay, he went there. Then he came back to the 49ers. Very comfortable here. Here's Everett. The blitz is coming. And the pass is almost intercepted by Merton Hanks. Now we talked about Deion Sanders coming in and starting. Deion Sanders came in and started for Merton Hanks, who was playing right corner, has moved to safety for Dana Hall. Watch this again. He's getting pressure from that backside. Watch from his backside. There's a free guy coming. It's Ken Norton again. Now he rolls away from it, but he didn't throw it quite as efficiently as he did the last time. 
That could have very easily been an interception by Hanks. Morton Anderson with Barnhart holding will try to tie it. 22 yards out, this field goal will attempt to be. And Anderson, as usual, is successful, and the score is tied at three. You know, here's that new 49er defense bat, and here's where Deion Sanders plays, and you can see what he adds. By his being there, he can take man-to-man -man there. Now you move Merton Hanks, who was a corner, to safety, so now you get an extra corner, so you have another cover guy in there. So now you can play more man, and you can free these guys up to attack the line of scrimmage and blitz more. So it is Deion Sanders' addition, but now you get another corner in there in case they go three wide receivers, and you can free up one or two linebackers to blitz more. Which is what they did on the last two plays to Jim Everett. And Merton Hanks very nearly had an interception. Anderson's kickoff sails down to Dexter Carter at the three. Flag on the play. Carter is wrestled down at about the 13-yard line. Good coverage by Othello Henderson of the Saints. But there's a penalty marker on the play. Those hats don't keep out a lot of sun, do they? No, they don't, but they do have the air holes in the back again. Yeah, they breathe. Yep, so that's that's one thing. You always have to get air. You have to get air up there in that head, and uh, with those holes there, you can also let it out. You can take it in and let it out. And I think you hear better. Back, number 40 on the return team. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Number William six. Floyd, the rookie fullback, who I think we're going to see more on offense today. That's what George Seifert told us. And, who is kind of a real fullback type of guy. About half and half, he said, with Mark Logan. Yeah, well, Mark Logan's more of a running back, and Floyd is more of a real fullback guy. Ricky Waters is a uh, running back also. That's he with the carry, stopped by Wayne Martin. Ricky Waters is one of those guys that is just so full of energy that once in a while you have to calm it down. And George Seifert had a talk with Waters this week about it. I guess he had some problems in the game last week with the Rams and trying to fight them and then he got in fight and practice and George kind of said look you know you're a leader on this team now and guys are watching you you can't be fighting every time someone tackles you or something. Good job this is Logan. Logan breaks into the secondary and Logan finally wrestled to the ground outside the 30 first down 49ers James Williams finally got him down. Well, that's what Mark Logan is. We're talking about him. You see him right here. He's not really the fullback, the blocker type of guy, but he is more like a tailback. And here you see him run like a tailback. He just takes that little pitch and outruns the inside penetration, makes a good cut off Ricky Waters' block. I mean, that's one thing about Waters. He just don't, doesn't only run. He will block, and he is a good receiver. And again, it's Logan. Again, it's Williams to make the stop. There's not a lot of footballs to go around here when you start talking about yeah. Jerry Rice. He has to get his passes. John Taylor, Brent Jones. And when you run it, you have to give it to Ricky Waters. And I think Mark Logan is, comes in about fifth or sixth <laughs> yeah. in that deal. And there's still only one ball. <laughs> right. And Mark Logan got two of them in a row. And he, he's probably ready to have a birthday party. That's about his quota. Four wide receivers. Well, one of the tight end, that was Brent Jones in motion. And it's Brent Jones who makes the catch. It's my turn now for the ball. Yeah, it just looks so easy, this 49er offense, the way they mix things and they spread. Brent Jones just ran a pattern, and he just went down there and just sat down. I mean, you just watch him come in the middle there. He's going to come from the outside. He's in motion. And you see him just right there. We just stop it. Here he is right here. And he just goes right down in the middle. Just sits down, Steve Young, yep. just boom, just like playing catch out there. Almost like a stroll through the secondary. Hey, you take all these great pass plays. He goes here, he goes there, he goes there. He just runs down and stops. Now, Jerry Rice hasn't caught a pass yet. His turn. Jerry Rice. 
up, and the fans know it, Pat. You knew it. You called that one. I think the fans were probably thinking the same thing. Jerry Rice hasn't caught one, and you're going to see him. He's just going to be in the top. Here's Jimmy Spencer here, who was, he was really in pretty good shape. And you're just going to see Jerry Rice run into the pattern. He's just going to come up. See, and he just hooks and sits down, and Steve Young throws it to him. We saw Brent Jones a play before run a hook, and then on that one, Jerry Rice ran a hook. First down at the St. 44. 3-3 three, three tie. Young. Ricky Waters. How about seven? Stopped by Darian Connor, who had a great game last week against Tampa Bay. Yeah, we saw we saw the hook pattern, and then the other pattern. That one was a crossing pattern. They had Brent Jones crossing deep, and then everyone went with him, and then Ricky Waters just came underneath Brent Jones. Second and two. He got eight. Jerry Rice, by the way, now has caught a pass in 131 straight games. That's the fourth best in NFL history. This is Waters. Near and has a first down. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. The New Orleans Saints three, the 49ers three. Two of the injured missing 49er offensive linemen Ralph Tam on the left Steve Wallace with him. I'm sorry that's not Ralph Tam that's Harris Barton and Wallace the two tackles. Yeah, and we see Harris Barton there he had that cast or that contraption on his left arm where he tore his tricep. He had tricep surgery. Water. Not much couple. Stopped yeah, by Ronaldo Turnbull. And it was interesting yesterday at practice, uh, Steve Wallace was in there. And uh, the first time the 49er offense practiced, Wallace was there. Then the next time they went in, Wallace wasn't in there. And then he has a, a thigh bruise, and I guess it, it really swelled up, and then it tightened up, and uh, they thought he would be able to play, but he wasn't able to go today. That was Ralph Tam on the other side of Steve Wallace. Here's Waters cut down inside the 30 about the 28 and a half yard line of the Saints. And this is why the 49ers are so difficult. You just want you know who do you want. I mean they throw to John Taylor one for 33 Ricky Waters two for 13 Jerry Rice one for 12 Brent Jones one for 10. I mean there's no guy that you can zero in. And then in addition to that, they run it to Mark Logan a couple of times. You can't say we just have to stop this guy. If you do, somebody else gets over. Here's Young back to try it again. Got a man. Jerry Rice, touchdown San Francisco. From 28 yards away, that's just Rice. And athletic ability from Steve Young. You get Jerry Rice over on the left side. Here he is right here. You get him on the left side. You get him in man to man. This is going to be a touchdown. I mean, Steve Young loves to throw to his left side, loves to throw to Jerry Rice, and loves to get man to man tight coverage. That was everything the 49ers would look for. That was Tyrone Leggett that was with Rice. Rice is taller and stronger. And Rice gets the touchdown. Doug Bryan's extra point is good. 10-3. Just watch how strong Jerry Rice is right there. He's going to come off. Now, right there, he makes a little move. You see, and that gives him the separation. See that right arm go up? He gets that right arm up. He knocks Leggett off. And with that, he knocks him off, sets, separates him a little, and gets a step on him so that Steve Young can throw that perfect pass. You know, he not only has the quickness and the speed, but he is so strong. Strong, yeah. Such a good Hughes returns the kickoff for the Saints. Anthony Peterson made the stop. 
Yeah, Jerry Rice cut off all his hair, and when he was in Kansas City, his mother came to the game, and she looked at it, and she said, I don't like it. She says, grow your hair back. And I asked him, I said, are you going to grow it back? And he says, <laughs> said, yeah. yes. Yeah, my mother told me to. <laughs> Always do what your mother tells you to. She didn't like that ball look. A lot of people can't say that. What, grow it back? Do what your mother tells you to do. <laughs> Or do it back. Yeah, you see Jerry Rice all over the place, Pat. This is I was watching TV here and I caught him. Look, look, look you at this on him? Thursday. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to watch some football. So I, watch, <laughs> and I see Jerry Rice. I said, what in the heck is this already? <laughs> and this. <laughs> and that's his ex-teammate, Roger Craig. I said, I thought these guys were ball players. They're <laughs> modeling. They said, we're modeling. I saw that on TV. Lo and behold. <laughs> that was shot. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you turn on TV, you expect to see some ball, and you see that. Take a reverse. Yeah, it just lets it go. In the di direction of Torrance Small, Deion Sanders, one of the defenders back there, thought he should have had an interception. Watch Deion Sanders, and you see why he's such a good cover guy. I mean, he gets on there, and, and he, he has great speed. I mean, he does... He just does all these things with with speed, quickness, and and all those things you have to be to to be a great athlete. I mean, a guy can be yeah. playing baseball a month ago, they go on strike, and he can come in in here and in one week be better than anyone else in the game at doing it. We know he can travel. Now we got to see him play. Here's Everett. I think Michael Haynes made the catch. He did. You know, that's one of the things that Eric Davis is going to have now. I think with a Deion Sanders here, you're going to go to the other side and say, okay, if we can't do it over here, let's come over to this side. And that's what you're seeing here. They looked over at Deion's side, came back to Eric Davis's side, and Michael Haynes makes a great catch. And what a good throw from Jim Everett. Everett going back now, confusion as to what play he wants called, and that's the first Saint timeout. They have two left. The 49ers have all three of theirs. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Chevrolet, the cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day. Genuine Chevrolet. By McDonald's, the official restaurant of the National Football League. By Titan Door Locks from Quickset, unbeatable strength, unbeatable security. And by A1 Steak Sauce and Spicy A1 Bowl. Together there, how steaks are done. Party somewhere else. How do they always know when the camera's on them? <laughs> and start know. yelling. All they got to do is put on a number, I think. Well, part of it is that one guy. 11:26 left to play in the first half at Candlestick Park. The 49ers 10-3 over the Saints. San Francisco ball at their own 23. Steve Young, the quarterback. Behind him, Ricky Waters and William Floyd. Rice in motion. Floyd gets the carry and gets nothing. Hit first by Sam Mills. You know, Sam Mills is proud of his two sons. He has one, one son that's going to play high school football. He's a defensive back. He has to sit out because he, he transferred. Then he has another son who's a linebacker who's playing as 11 years old. And he says, you know, he'll listen to his coaches and he'll listen to everyone about linebacker play, but he won't well, listen to but me. But me. <laughs> so that's because you're an inside linebacker and he's an outside linebacker. Second and 10. Young on the draw play to Waters. Hey, Waters didn't make anything more on that, but did he put a move on Sam Mills? Sam Mills was squatted there. He was all ready to tackle Waters, and he just did a spitter. Just watch Mills here. You'll see him. He'll step up here. Waters comes. And he goes back in here, but he's all ready to tackle him. Watch him. 51. He's coming. He's on position. Got great position. Woo! Where'd he go? He just gave him some air there. He tackled position. <laughs> Third down, Young back to throw it. Has a man in his face and now tries to come out, chased by Turnbull. And her 
barreled it out of bounds. Hey, the guy that made that play for New Orleans was Wayne Martin because he was the guy in his face. Yep. He came up there, he put his left hand up, and that's where Steve Young is trying to throw the way. Watch Wayne Martin right there, number 93. Now, right there, see him get that hand up there? That hand was where Steve Young was trying to throw it. And when he couldn't throw it there, he said, I better get the heck out of here. Wayne Martin has been playing extremely well. In fact, when you asked Jim Moore about how he was playing yesterday, he just said, hey, great, great. I can't tell you how well he's playing. Wilms Meyer to punt it. Doesn't turn over, and the Saints say stay away from it. And they'll take over in pretty good shape. Balls out of bounds at their own 42. Join us next Sunday at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, for our one-hour pregame show, Fox NFL Sunday, with Terry Howie, Jimmy, and James Brown. Then it's Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader action at 1 p.m. Eastern time with the Dallas Cowboys meeting the Redskins, the Packers in New England, Detroit, Tampa Bay. Late games, John and I'll be back here at Candlestick as the 49ers face the Eagles. First down, New Orleans at their own 42. 49ers again throwing blitz. Everett has to get away from it. Flag on the play. They're really putting the heat on Jim Everett. And that's what Tim McDonald wanted to do. He's talking about being more aggressive, and he's one of the aggressive guys. And on that play, he came up, and he was in a blitz. Holy. 62 offense, 10 yards, repeat first down. Holding against the center, Jeff Ulamake. Now watch Tim McDonald. He's going to come up in here, and he's going to blitz. There's the, he's a strong safety. He's moved up there. You see him get up into that blitz hole? In fact, the holding was against him. Jeff Ulamake, the center, reached out that left arm to get the strong safety, Tim McDonald, but he picked up a 10-yard penalty. First of 20. Nothing doing for the Saints on the ground all day long. That was Derek Ned, and he got maybe a yard. I think that you see uh, Norton in there. He's one of the guys that I think was frustrated by you know this new defense and maybe not being aggressive. I think Tim McDonald is another guy who's been frustrated because you have a bunch of guys that had been very good players on other teams that are playing together for the first time here. Second and 17. Derek Nett, the lone setback behind the Jim Everett. No blitz this time. To Ned. Just barely got a yard. Norton was with him. I'll uh, tell you, Bryant Young, you want to watch a move. Watch Bryant Young right here. He's going to go right into Chris Port, give him a move. Whap, be right on Jim Everett there. I mean, Port has to do a better job of pass protection. You see him? He just hit, took that inside, and completely depleted Everett. Third and long. And if they don't get Bryant Young blocked, it's going to be fourth and a lot longer. And he's not the only one. That's Haynes in motion. Out of the spread. A little time, not much. As Derek Ned had no hope of ever getting a first down. And they're just not doing a job pass protecting for Jim Everett. And I'll tell you, this 49er defense pad is starting to turn the corner. You know, they are starting to play together. They are starting to feel what they thought they were going to be two months ago. So Tommy Barnhart back to punt for the Saints to Dexter Carter. Barnhart's third kick of the day. This one's a good one. At the 17, Carter knocked backwards, and down he goes, lost yardage. Wesley Walls was the man down to make the stop. Good coverage. Friday on Fox. Well, the Saints are going to use a new defense here, Pat. They're going with five defensive backs, or a nickel package on first down. Well, they were going to. They showed it to him, and then they just changed it. They 
decided to do it, and they decided against it. And that was a nickel to stop that first down passing of the 49ers. Now they're back in their regular defense. And here's Young to throw it to Rock. it. I don't recall saying that too many times. And you're not going to see it a lot in the future. Look at those two tackles. And then this is the stuff that they added. You know, we're talking about the Pro Bowl additions. Look, Ricky Jackson and six Pro Bowls. Richard Dent, who was out with a knee injury. Charles Mann, Deion Sanders, Ken Norton. And they have all these guys that have been Pro Bowl players, but they haven't played together. And they look like they're starting to today. 18 and all. Young gets it across to a wide open. John Taylor. But only got to about the 15, stopped by James Williams and Othello Henderson. He's the man they added to stop that first down, second down pass. If they can get away with it, they'll stay with it. Well, you know, they've done that against the 49ers before, played them in, in nickel the whole time, and, and then the 49ers are just running. You see, there's Othello Henderson up there, number 20. So he's coming up. If they're going to run, he wants to be up around the line of scrimmage. Then if it's passed, then he's a defensive back and he just drops in his zone. Third down now. And now they have six defensive backs. And that's enough to cut the 49ers off short of a first down. Now the guy that cut him off was Sean Lumpkin, the strong safety. I think he made he made that hit right there that stopped him for the first down. One thing the Saints say that they had to do is they had to tackle well, and you know they're going to catch him, but they got to hit him right when they catch him. This is a lot closer to a first down than I thought. Yeah, but that's still a good tackle by Lumpkin. I mean, that ball just got over that line. I think the uh, 49ers got a pretty good spot too. I think they did. And they also got well, stretch it out. Let's see. If there's any ball beyond that thing, it's not a first down. It's about a chain link and short. About a chain link short. They're going to measure it. They got guys down there. And at this position on the field, I know you don't like to. It's only got a half a chain link. And you would think that normally you have to go for a link or a half a link. But when you're down on the minus 21 yard line, you have to punt it. And you know, I mean, that's in the coach's creed. You have to do that. You don't want to, and it bothers you as much as it bothers the fans, but that's the play you have to do. So Klaus Wilmsmeyer is back to punt. To Tyrone Hughes, who's standing back at about the 40-yard line, the St. 40. Try to set up a return. This is a high, good kick. Fair catch signal by Hughes and the Saints take over at about the 37 their own 37 candlestick park beautiful day in California couldn't ask for a better one for watching football or lounging yeah yeah the thing is you get here early and then you you're relaxed but you have to have a lot of smoke I mean I mean you just put the thing in there and then fan it so that everyone could smell that smoke and then that gets your digestive juices going smoke does it because then you put some stuff in there to make the smoke smell you got to be sure you put some stuff in there though yeah, there has to be. it just reminds you you know it just reminds your stomach that there's some good stuff going to be cooking Lorenzo Neal is the ball carrier. Not much. You know, here's the key here, Pat. Look at the New Orleans Saints in their rush. Now, the key word here is inches. They're averaging 3.6 inches. The 49ers, 5.3 yards. Their running game was like that smoke in that pot. <laughs> Not much behind it. Going nowhere fast. Nothing in it. Second. That's Lorenzo Neal again, and he is going nowhere. You know, part of that is the is the Saints really aren't doing a very good job of blocking or running, but a big part of it is that again that 49er defense. And I think the whole thing is based on those two defensive tackles. I mean, I think. Get, uh, 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 Brian Young and Dana Stubberfield in there are really tough in there. 
And then, and then they're pressing with those linebackers, bringing the strong safety up. They got a whole bunch of guys up around the line of scrimmage. Look at them right now. Third and six. And complete. Everett intended for Michael Haynes. Behind him. This is why you can't throw on Deion Sanders. You watch that stance, so I'm not sure exactly what that is, but he's going to get low, keep those knees bent. You can hit before it gets five yards, and then he just covers his guy like a blanket. I mean, there's no one. The guy doesn't even run a pattern after a while. That stance is a, looks like a one-legged hunker. And this is Barnard all the way into 49er territory. Flag on the play. I'm sure they had somebody illegally downfield, but that's okay since he ran it, I would think. Yeah, it's a run. He didn't he didn't throw it, so you could have someone downfield. I don't think that was a planned run. No. Barnhart saw some pressure and just brought the ball down and started to run to the left. Defense, nose tackle is offside. The penalty is declined. Penalty declined. That'll be their longest run of the day, but watch Barnhart here. He's in punt formation. He's going to he, he's going to feel some pressure. You see the pressure right there in front of him. And then he decided I better not do that. So he looks to the left and there's nothing there and he can get a first down. And he might well be their longest run of the season. Yeah, that could be their longest run for four games total. First and 10 Saints inside the 49 or 40. Everett still got it. First down. To Derek Ned at about the 49 or 25. That's one of the big patterns in professional football this year, and it seems to be getting bigger is that bootleg where the, the running backs start one way and the quarterback goes the other way, and everyone's running a crossing pattern towards the quarterback. Seems to me that it all began right here with the 49ers. Yeah, and, and the 49ers still do it better than anyone. Remember, Joe Montana used to do it, now Steve Young does it bootleg into his left. First and 10 at the 49er 25. Here comes the blitz. Everett leads it. Gets it to Wesley Walls. Picked up about three, and that's all. Maybe not that much. You know, one thing I know we talked about frustrated 49ers, and one of those guys I think was Ken Norton. It, like George Seifert says, you come in with a lot of expectations, and maybe you don't reach those expectations. But I noticed today that they're blitzing Ken Norton a lot more than they have since he's gotten here. Second down and 10. Derek Ned is the lone setback. Here comes the blitz again. Everett reads it again this time to Quinn Early. A couple short of the first. Oh, Willie Rofe almost got into it with Ricky Jackson there. You'll see, here's Willie Rofe, and here's Ricky Jackson coming from this side. And you'll see him at the end of the play. See, Jackson comes. Rofe is just too big and too strong. But Ricky Jackson's a tough guy. They're going to go after Rofe. He's only a second-year guy. He said, I don't care how long you've been around, how many Pro Bowls you've been in. Or if we are teammates, I'm not going to take any of that stuff from you or anyone. I just, I just don't know you that well. <laughs> Third down. Three they need, and the 49ers again showing blitz. Everett. Earl Smith. Touchdown, uh, touchdown Saints. Well, you live by the blitz, you get burned by it. And Jim Everett finally figured it out. I think they got their pass protection down. He's been hanging in there and drove it all the way down the field. You're going to see the tight end up there. He's just going to run it out, Irv Smith. And just as he breaks out of it, just he get a perfect pass out there by Jim Everett. He just pulled away from Merton Hanks. The whole thing set up by the run by Tommy Barnhart out of punt formation. Yep, they were all ready to punt it, and uh, that wasn't a planned play. It was just a reaction of Barnhart. He's holding now for Anderson's extra point attempt. <laughs> Tie score at 10. Much to the delight of Jim Mora. 
Let's watch that touchdown again. We see Everett's in a shotgun. Here's Irv Smith here. He's just going to come out, run an out pattern here. Burton Hanks comes and misses a tackle about here. Let's see the, the, the pretty good protection. See, they start there in motion, and now he has pretty good protection to blitz. They pick it up. They give him time. He makes a perfect pass to Irv Smith, and Irv Smith is really just too big for Merton Hanks. But it all starts out here, Pat, with protection. They have to do this. You want to blitz? You just get a man on a man. Give Everett the time. You see that pocket they form for him? And then he could see Irv Smith all the way. Charles Mann was lined up at left defensive end on that play. Jackson at the right side, and they picked them both up pretty well. And then Jim Everett goes back and talks to his offensive coordinator, Carl Smith. A while ago, they weren't speaking. No. Jim Everett was sitting next to Carl Smith, and Carl Smith was talking to someone else in the phone. There's Carl Smith right here, the offensive coordinator, graduate of Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Touchdowns bring togetherness. Yep, it sure does. You know, he ran in a Boston Marathon. I mean, you don't find a lot of offensive coordinators that are in that kind of shape that could run in Boston Marathon. Yeah, any marathon, Boston or wherever. So then why does he have to sit down so much during the game? Thinking about the marathon. Dexter Carter. At about the 24. Again, a reminder about next week here on Fox. At noon Eastern and 9 a.m. Pacific, one-hour pregame show, Fox NFL Sunday with Terry Howie, Jimmy, and James Brown, and it's Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader action at 1 o'clock Eastern. The Cowboys against the Redskins, the Packers and Patriots, Detroit, Tampa Bay. Late games, John and I will be right back here at Candlestick. The 49ers take on the Philadelphia Eagles. Giants will play, play the same. Here's Young back to throw. To Logan. Sheds a tackler. Gets a first down. Hurry. Gonna try to get off one more play before. No, they're not. Timeout before the two-minute warning. Well, now they're gonna let it run down to the two-minute warning. And there's their timeout. And now they still have three left. 10-10 tie at Candlestick. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the San Francisco 49ers and the National Football League is prohibited. Hey, Pat and John, not bad for a hockey player, eh? <laughs> hmm. I knew the way you said without. I knew, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a Canadian without. That had to be Gretzky. I'm not sure he's a member of the right union. Tell you though, you know, you, you talk about guys that are fun to watch, and we're seeing them here when you when you see a Deion Sanders and you see a Jerry Rice, and when you go to hockey, you know that's that's Wayne Gretzky. Uh, you know, you just turn it on, you just watch a game, and you see the guy that is the best that ever played. It's just fun to watch that. Fun to hear him talk too. <laughs> Here's Steve Young, pressured again by the Saints, and he almost appeared on the other side of that pile, but Wayne Martin again was close by. Yeah, again, you're going to see the pressure on him, and, and, and he gets back here to pass. Now, he's looking downfield, and he tries to step, and he gets, he gets the pressure from Turnbull that is in the area where he's trying to throw. Now, that's the second time that they've done that. See now here's where he was looking and you see this is what he was trying to hit right here and he would have had a shot maybe there at Rice or maybe Taylor on that corner but again by Turnbull getting in that lane Turnbull got between Steve Young and Jerry Rice third and 16 now for the 49ers a timeout they have two left Saints also have two left. Yeah, the 49ers really had control of yep. this game until that punt. The uh, Saints went back to punt. 
They get pressure up the middle. Barnhart takes off to the left, gets them a first down, and they go on and score. Right, and they just kind of change the whole tide of this game. Third and long. Again, Young was hit just as he let it go. He does get it to Brent Jones, but not enough for a first down. But again, good pressure by the Saints. And that's Ronaldo Turnbull. Again, you're going to see him coming from that side. He comes around Pollock right there. Pollock tries to hold him, and he can't. And boom, he just gives it to Young right in the back. Whiplash. New Orleans takes this time out. Coming up on the Dockers halftime, James and Terry will have all the scores and highlights from around the league on this fourth week of the 94 NFL season. That's all coming up on the Dockers halftime. <laughs> Will Myers' kick is a good one. Huge. Hey, he's got some room. Go, go, go. He was off to the races. Saved by Antonio Goss. Tyrone Hughes is one of the best returners in the league. In fact, he's a Pro Bowl returner. And you just watch. This is this is what a, a return guy goes through. The first thing you have to do is get in position, then catch it, and then look for a wall. Now he had a wall up that right side. And you look back into the inside. Looked like he had to put his mouthpiece in there, and then he cuts right back into a 49er. But that's a big return because the Saints are going to get another shot here. Just outside the 40, Everett back to throw. Behind the intended receiver, who is Michael Haynes, and that stops the clock with a minute 19 left. Yeah, you know, one of the things, these guys really get shaken around. You watch. You watch his glasses just get knocked right out of his helmet. That is tough. I mean, you know, they have a tough beginning because they have to catch the ball, but they have a tough ending. I mean, he got everything. Now, you see his glasses win, his mouthpiece win, the helmet was a scoop. Not many punt returners wear glasses. Here is Everett back to throw. Pass incomplete, intended for small. Merton Hanks, the defender. You know, that's one of the advantages we talk about Merton Hanks is, is moving from corner to safety. Now when they put in three wide receivers, he can match up. You already have your third corner in the game, and that gives the 49ers some more flexibility now. Third and ten. Big down for both teams right here. Everett, snap is good. Pressure's good. Pass is caught by Derek Brown down to the 15. Good job by Jim Everett. Jim Everett really hung in there on that one, Pat, because there was pressure there, and he hung in there and threw the ball. The Saints only have one timeout left. They don't want to use it now. Out of bounds. That'll stop it. Quinn Early, defended by Deion Sanders. Watch his previous play. This is a one where where Everett does a good job one of hanging in there staying with his receiver and two getting away from the rush right there stepping up a little coming back and making a heck of a throw. You know he's taking a rap sometimes and not hanging in there not doing some of these things but he is hanging in there today. Fifty two seconds left in the first half second and four. Brown the long setback Everett throws low that hit the ground before it got to Quinn early again Eric the Saints, Davis the defender excuse me John the Saints do have their uh, one timeout left and they're probably going to save that in case they do throw one short and they have to have to take a timeout if they don't get it in the end zone have to take a timeout for the field goal but I think now in this third down they ought to be thinking of just throwing that ball in the end zone. In the end zone somewhere. Now, I don't know. You know. It seems like everyone got kind of afraid of this red zone and they're throwing it short and stuff. And I think you got to challenge challenge the end zone. Why put it up if you're not going to challenge the end zone from here? Everett. I don't know what he was doing.
I don't know that there was a receiver in there. Maybe it was either. a. He was throwing it in the area of a middle screen, like you would try and throw a screen pass in the middle. I'm not sure if his running back Derek Brown was in there or not for a screen, but it sure was an ugly play. Now they have a play out of field goal formation, which the 49ers ran in practice this week and couldn't stop. It's a fake field goal. Yeah, that had to be something. I guess that was Derek Brown in there that he was trying to throw a middle screen to. Watch out for this one. Anderson hits. And the Saints take the lead over the 49ers. 13 to 10. Jim Moore is probably thinking about that, that second down call and you know throwing that hook short and then that third down call, trying to surprise him when yeah, you know, I mean when you have a guy like Everett and he is in a rhythm, again, you would think without second guessing, you would think that you would just throw that ball in the end zone. But this whole thing changed with that, uh, that Barnhart run. Yep. Changed the whole complexion of the game. Because the 49ers really had control on offense, they had control on defense, they were aggressive, they were doing all those things, and and Tommy Barnhart runs with the ball, then Jim Everett gets a little rhythm going. They get a touchdown and they get the ball back again a good punt return drive it down again and I don't know about that second and third down play call I don't but, either but the fourth down kick was good and that put him ahead and I'm sure that if you would have talked to the Saints before the game or last night if they could be ahead at halftime at Candlestick they'd be very very happy they lead 13 10 there's a guy Jim Mora who does an outstanding job of coaching. I think when you talk about the good coaches in professional football, the top guys as coaches and men and all those things, I think Jim Mora is one of the top guys. I think George Seifert is also. No question about it. Dexter Carter standing back deep. For Anderson's kickoff, he'll probably bounce it. 38 seconds left, he might kick away and does. To the seven for Carter. With room for Carter. Outside the 30, about the 31 yard line. Carter out of bounds. Clock stopped now with 32 seconds left to play. Tyrone Hughes. Yeah, and the 49er offense with 32 seconds and two timeouts, they have an offense that can still get a score in there. I mean, oh, there are some sure. teams in this league that can't, but the 49ers are one of them that still have offense now. And they have a lot of weapons. Which we've been talking about. Waters, Rice, Taylor. A group lined up left. Rice by himself to the right. Rice makes the reception from Young. First down, San Francisco. At the 45. Hey, uh -huh. That was an old thing. You put the whole group to the left, isolate Jerry Rice over here on the right, and throw the ball to him. 49ers use the timeout with 23 seconds left. They have one left. See what they did. It's not a. It's not a bad move here. They take the bunch out here, like put everyone over here, and here's Jerry Rice down on this side. So what they're doing is they're isolating him here. Then they're going to run the slant to him in here. In other words get everyone over on the right side away from Jerry Rice then give him the field to work back on this side. That's not a it's a, not a bad offensive idea but you think in it, it's one trap that you shouldn't fall into. But Steve Young didn't almost have that lane or almost didn't have that lane. Well you talking about throwing it around guys or Wayne Martin through guys or whatever how he got that ball by Wayne Martin's hands. He may not have gotten it entirely by his hands. It might have been touched. Straight. First down, nevertheless. 23 seconds left. Young. This one is batted down. And yeah, they tried that same thing, Pat. They had the three guys out in the left side, Young out in the right. I mean, I mean, Rice out in the right. Now, Rice was open. But again, he didn't have a lane to throw it in. You see, you have to have a lane. He, he needs a lane right here on this side. And you'll see that the lane was there, then it was closed down again by Wayne, Wayne Martin. Wayne Martin got a hand up and on it. Yeah. 
Second down now at 10. Here's Young. Hit by Wayne Martin just as he let it go. And Young was slow getting up last time and slow again. It's Wayne Martin one more time. I tell you, Steve Young, you watch Wayne Martin. He's going to come from this side, and he gets the pressure right here. We saw him knock the ball down. Watch him. He's working against Derek Deese in there. He comes off Deese's block, and he hits Young just as he throws the ball. Well, whatever they said about how well he was playing has certainly come true. Now he's made three plays in a row there. Two lane takeaways and a knockdown. Third down. Young to throw. This time he has time. Dumps it out to Ricky Waters. Waters gets out of bounds after he gets the first down. And the 49ers still have one timeout left. Seven seconds left. And they probably have, you know, uh, they they would have to get the ball, I would say, to about the 25 yard line. So they need about 15, 20 yard. They need a 15 or 20 yard play, then take a quick timeout and kick a field goal. So keep that in mind. It's first down again. Seven seconds to go. They need about 15 to get in field goal range. They have the one timeout left. Outside the water. That's not enough. Two seconds left. Yeah, now, now they aren't going to have time. They either have to try a field goal here or just throw one in the end zone, and they're going to try the field goal here. Doug Bryan, I'm not quite sure he can get it this far. Uh, I because that's going to be a 54 it'd be 54 yards he's where he's lining up it'll be 55 not much wind however this will be all leg and hole and snap snap's good not going to get to it That's the end of the first half with the score the New Orleans Saints 13 the San Francisco 49ers 10 stay tuned for the Dockers halftime Fox NFL Sunday continues after these messages from your local station. You're watching Fox NFL Sunday. This is the Dockers halftime. Don't just get dressed get Dockers. And welcome to the Dockers halftime. The score right now at the half. New Orleans Saints, thanks to the golden foot of Morton Anderson leading it 13 to 10. Deion Sanders playing at Candlestick. Too. Ah, Deion, bottom right of your screen, you'll find Jerry Rice one on one. Why he is considered the greatest in the world at doing that, making catches. Look at him, I got him a little dance. Deion's in town, a little competition. Jim Everett stepping back. Irv Smith, boy, what a great job by Irv Smith out of Notre Dame. This guy's really turned out to be a really good draft choice by the Saints. Notre Dame guy, and again, the uh, Saints are leading that one by a field goal. All right, the L.A. Rams in Kansas City, led by Jerome Bettis, 35 carries, 132 yards, blank Kansas City. Chris Chandler, oh. the injured Chris Miller. Ugly uniform, but boy, what great concentration by Flipper Anderson, only averaging 35.1, if you like statistics. That's th yards per catch. Nice job. Joe Montana back. Doesn't find the safety. Didn't see him. There he is, Keith Lyle. Boy, what a great job the dead blame uh, Rams did today on Montana. I think Jim Ir Erkenbach, the offensive line coach of the Rams, and Chuck Knox, man, they, they ought to really be proud of themselves. Two and two. Who would have thought it, J.B.? Didn't allow any sacks, but I like no that No sacks. Dead blame. I like that, Terry. That's dead a southern blame. thing. All right, so the Rams. I can't spell it. <laughs> blame Kansas City, 16 to nothing. All right, Atlanta broke the jinx at RFK Stadium, winning for the first time ever. 27-20 over the Redskins. John Freeze at the helm again. Oh, man, I love this route. Deep end, 20 yards. Get a man's got some speed like Henry Ellard. Get him the ball in that crease, and there he goes. Nice job, Henry Ellard. Six receptions, 162 yards, one little flip. Hard to believe the Rams let that man go. George. Oh, -ho, bye, George. That's right. Bernie Manuel, rookie. Rice, quarterback last year. Great job. One-handed grab that touchdown pass. Eve Shula in the game late. Hands off to Ricky Irvin's three-yard touchdown run. Brings Washington closer. 
but uh, not enough as Washington tries the onside kick. Terry Bertie Manuel recovers it for Atlanta, and Atlanta puts the finishing touches to that victory over Washington, 27 to 20. Henry Ellard looking awfully good. Hard to believe the Rams let him go. Tampa Bay and Green Bay. Brett Favre owns the Bucks, 30 to 3. They win it today. Hardy Nickerson leaving in the first series. That didn't help Tampa Bay at all. No, look at this. You love this as a quarterback. Yeah, I threw some touchdown passes today. Long one here, nine yards, but it was a two-yard pass behind the line of scrimmage. Great job by Edgar Bennett. Now, here's an audible by Brett Favre. No one knew the route. All of a sudden, Ed West says, oh, yeah, I'll get down here. Find me, Jack. He does. It makes a great effort. And can you imagine if all the computers and everything going on? A guy makes an audible. Nobody knows what it is. Ed West says, oh, give me the... Sandlot football at its best. <laughs> it Far worked. 306 yards, three touchdowns. It did work indeed for Green Bay. All right. Minnesota had gone out in front of Miami 28 0 at the half, had to hold on for a three point victory. Dan Marino a little frustrated in the first half, and good reason. Yeah, I'll tell you what, down 28 to nothing. You kidding me? I'd be frustrated. Look at the job Moon does here. Now, you talk about. It's going your way today, Jack. Look at that. Just throw it up. Everybody from Miami is in the end zone, but Chris Carter makes the interception and a touchdown reception. Good job. Now, look at this. The reason this was open was earlier. Uh, there was a post route run by Moreno. Comes back with a corner wide open. Then that. I like that. Oh, and that little frustrated look. Of course, on Denny Green's face. But, hey, he, he found reason to smile. Scotty Graham yeah. takes it across and a three-point victory. Now, again, a lot of guys came through. Moon, 26 of 37 for 326 yards. Terry Allen did the job on the ground. It looks like Moon is getting comfortable in that offense. He line. is getting comfortable, and they can run the football. I thought today I, that Tony Junge's defense in the second half, and this happens with a coach. You go in at halftime, you got a 28 nothing lead. You go in and you tell your players, don't get, hey, this, these guys can come back. Do they and believe the it? No, the players are going, yeah, we, we they they're not coming back on it. Yeah, we got a twin. And you walk out there, and you really aren't focused. And Marino, the greatest quarterback, I think, maybe, that ever played the game, come back and put some, some big numbers. Oh, that's saying that's something. strong, wasn't it? Real aerial attack, though. Minnesota comes away with a three-point victory. All right. In Cleveland, a final make that one in Indianapolis. It was uh, Vinny Testaverde, 16 of 28, three touchdowns, one interception as they pull victorious. Jim Brown, consultant to the Browns. What do you mean on the hey, sidelines? Mean. How you like this? Isn't that a nice one? Look at that. You get a little pressure, you drop it off the Roosevelt Pots out of Northeast Louisiana State University. Touchdown. Now, Benny, look at Benny. Gets back, Cannon drop, drives the ball right by the linebacker. Safeties are nowhere in sight. And Leroy Horde high-stepping it all the way for the touchdown. And yeah. Benny Testaverde, delayed reaction. Tried to be cool, but he went on and screamed anyway as Cleveland was victorious 21-14. Marshall Falk kept in check 59 yards on the ground. Boy, the Raiders are having all kinds of difficulty right now at the half at the Coliseum, trailing 20 to 3. New England, I tell you, Bill Parcells' team is playing a little defense, leading the Lions 17 to 7. And Houston behind two Gary Brown touchdowns, leading Cincinnati that late in the second quarter, 14 to nothing. We'll return to Candlestick Park for the start of the second half after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. Candlestick Park, halftime from overhead as the teams have yet to come back from their locker rooms. And uh, now they are out. This first half highlight was brought to you or is brought to you by MCI Proof Positive. You know, this is a play that really changed the whole game around. The 49ers had control of the game. Barnhart, Tommy Barnhart goes to punt. There's no punt there. And look at this left side. I think he could have kept running them. I mean, there was just yeah. no 49ers. And the reason there were no 49ers, they were all turning to run to get into a return. Go 49ers, go Fox, go Madden, Madden Express. I thought you had a buzz. No, I do. I don't know where that one came from. Was that a real one or a toy somewhere? That thing just came out of nowhere, Pat. I don't know anything about that deal. Oh, you got a lot of friends. <laughs> yeah, I think this is this is kind of still throwback Sunday. <laughs> you know, and, and we're throwing back everything. We got the uniforms, we got the cheerleaders, and they got they got me back taking a train. Well, throwback. Back. There, was, there was a day, remember, when the whole NFL used to take oh, trains. Oh, do I? I've been on a lot of those trips. 49ers, by the way, are wearing their uniforms from 1955. 
And the Saints from their inaugural year, 1967. How about the cheerleaders? I don't know if they had cheerleaders yet. This is Tyrone Hughes out to about the 24-yard line. Your impression of the first half so far, John? Well, I thought the 49ers really had control of the game. And, you know, their offense was going, although they didn't get a lot of points. I thought their defense was really looking good. They, they, they were aggressive and everything. And then that Tommy Barnhart punt thing, that started things. They got a first down, and they went in and got a touchdown. And the Saints just took over the momentum of the game. That changed the whole complexion. No question about it. 49ers have been blitzing and successfully so. Everett started to pick it up. The Lions started to block. Let's see if it continues. Everett. Reverse coming in and with room. There's Michael Haynes. Haynes for a Saint first down at about the 37. Here are the first half statistics. And the Saints, again, just haven't been able to run the ball at all. And, you know, if you look at they only had 26 yards rushing in that in that first half but we said before the game that I mean what they're going to do if they're going to move the ball it's going to be with passing yards their eight first downs have all been through passing and the whole thing is going to be on Jim Everett and his offensive line and they just got another first down on a reverse Everett, uh, and the communication between him and Brooks Brown somewhat complicated pass complete and maybe not complete. Yes, it is. To Quinn Early. It's only for about a yard. I don't think it makes that much difference. No. <laughs> I don't think it's going to bring up much different of a second down situation there. Second and eight. Maybe longer. For him. I wonder if that's an official guy, that guy there. I mean, if that's something that's sponsored... Uh, and owned solely by the San Francisco 49. I, I hope he's not official. Here comes the blitz. Norton is picked off. And so is the pass to Haynes. And that'll be enough for a first. Good throw by Everett. And Everett hung in there. And you and you watch the line. First of all, they have to they have to get their blocks. And then if they're going to blitz and bring that sixth guy, you have to get him. So they, they do a good job of picking up. You see big Dombrowski. He just moved over to the left, knocked Ken Norton right down, and that gave Jim Everett an area where he could keep his feet clean. Big Dombrowski. That just sounds like he should be big. Well, it? you had I mean, if you got a name like Dombrowski, you either have to say hey in front of it or big. Hey, Dombrowski. <laughs> Everett back to throw it again. Pass complete. To early. I beg your pardon to Michael Haynes. But to the 49er 35. Yeah, one thing about Michael Haynes is he has speed. So when he comes off the line like this, you have to think he's going to go deep. And then when he stops, then he can get that hook. Because if you're the corner out there, if you're Deion Sanders, you know that you can run, but you also know that he can run. So when he comes off and sells you deep, you better believe it for a while. They've got Haynes on the inside of this. These two receivers set down to the left. The handoff inside to Derek Brown and nothing. Boy, those two guys in the middle have done a job for the 49ers. Stubble field that time. You know, we talk about how Steve Young spreads the ball around. Jim Everett does too. I mean, he's thrown 10 times to his wide receivers, four times to his tight ends, and four times to his running backs. And he throws it right, middle, and left, short and deep. And that's the thing you have to do against any defense in the NFL. Second and 10, passing down again. See if the 49ers send anybody. Someone moved. A lot of pointing going on. I think it might have been Dombrowski. They're all pointing at Big Dombrowski. Hey, Dombrowski. Full start prior to the snap, 72 offense. Five yards, repeat second down. Yep, that's Big Dombrowski. He's right there next to the center, the left guard there. Yeah, he's trying to hold. You see him move? Right there. They all caught him. Right there. There's Dombrowski. You see Jim Everett. He turned his head yeah. to his left and said, hey, Dombrowski, Don't stay there. Back. Don't be jumping early. Second and 15. 
two tight ends. The pass is to Herb Smith, who gets down to about the 33. Not enough for a first, but back past the original line of scrimmage. Hey, two things are happening here. One is the Saint offensive line is taking control of this 49er defense and blocking well. And two, Jim Everett is getting in a rhythm. Jim Everett is feeling very, very comfortable in this game. And yeah, that's one of the things you hear about Jim Everett is don't you can't let him get into a rhythm. And you can't let him get comfortable, and he is doing it. And when he gets comfortable and in a rhythm, he can put a whole bunch of completions together. Derek Ned is back with Jim Everett. No blitz. Everett fires, passes into the basket and lost. I think it had to be Irv Smith. It was Irv Smith, and it was a perfect pass. Just watch him. That's Irv Smith on that post there. And you see him, he just puts that ball right in there. Whoa. Now, Irv Smith, that's why you always have to have your hands out in front of your body. You know, because that ball came in and hit him in the shoulder pads and started to bounce out. Then it looked like he almost, almost had control had it. of it again. And, of course, if he would have had control of it again, then that would have been a catch and a fumble. So Morton Anderson has come out with Barnhart holding. This will be from 50 yards away. And he can get it there. But not this time. Well short is Anderson. So they'll bring it back to the spot where he kicked. 49ers trail by three. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by the totally new Ford Contour, a world car for the 21st century. By the Optima True Grace Card from American Express. By Zima, a unique alcohol beverage. And by Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. Steve Young puts Jerry Rice in motion. Fake one way through the other, incomplete. Intended for Brent Jones. You know that pastor Irv Smith I think Pat should have been really ruled a a catch and a fumble because if you watch it here's Tim McDonald here and his hand is going to come in now watch it goes away now Irv Smith comes in and he has it right there now watch McDonald's left hand is going to come in and knock it out of there now that should have been a fumble the 49ers would have had it right there they forced the field goal and goes back to the 40 so really the 49ers still got an advantage. The throw is back to Logan, and Logan gets away from one tackler and is down at about the 45. It'll bring up a third down situation. James Williams out to bring Logan down. Yeah, we we talked about the 49ers and their and their weapons, and look at how they move it around. Jerry Rice three catches. I think you better get back to him. John Taylor two, Ricky Waters four, Brent Jones two, Logan two, Nate Singleton one. I mean. He gives everyone the ball, and I think you ought to give maybe a little more in this half to Rice and Taylor. Third and six. Those wide receivers you have to utilize. Up to Waters, however, and that's enough for a first down. Waters chased by Sam Mills. And again, spread it around. And I'll tell you, he did a heck of a job of getting out of there. If you just watch Ricky Waters, the first thing you have to do is get out of the backfield. He's going to come through here. Now you have blockers here and blockers here, and you have to find a hole to come through. Now that's that's the first thing he does. You see right there, he finds a hole there, makes a couple moves on turn ball there to get free, and then once he gets out in the open field, he can get open. But you have to get through the line first. First and ten, and Waters gets the carry. And knocked out of bounds after he picked up three, perhaps, maybe four. Jimmy Spencer. Herded him out of bounds. Beautiful, bright, sunshiny day in San Francisco. Ricky Waters, nine carries, 39 yards. He would like to carry about 30 times a game, he says. Well, he says you watch a Barry Sanders and an Emma Smith go on Monday night, you just read. Boy, would that be fun to do someday? Sure, he'd like it as a steady diet. Here's Young back to throw. Swings it outside to Waters. Stepping inside. About two short of the first. 
stop by Joe Johnson. You know, this New Orleans Saint defense is, has always been well coached. I mean, they've always tackled well. They've always gang tackled well. They've always played a sound scheme. I mean, there's there's never anything easy that you get against the Saints. And Steve Sidwell is right there. He's the defensive coordinator and and they're probably over the years have been as solid not as great a talent as a lot of teams but as solid as any third and two and one he's going to have the first Waters got that one on his own really because James James Williams was back there I mean he was there for the cutback you have to guy, have guys play the onside, then you have to have guys play the backside for the cutback. They're going to measure. It looks as if he's got it. But if they don't get it, this is that area where they're going to have to go for the first down anyway on fourth. Yeah, I'm sure in this area they will. Remember, in the first half, they missed one by a chain length. They got this one by a couple of lengths here. But if now this would be an area where they would go for it. First down, 49ers. We watch the the end here. You see Ricky Waters is going to start to the right and then cut back to the left. He had the guy there. You see Williams was there number 90 and Ricky Waters was able to get by him and pick up that first down. 49ers in a hurry. First and 10 at the same 32. Jones is the man in motion. Jones swings it out to Brent Jones. That was the the halftime show. Yeah. And they <laughs> they just go out and play at halftime and then pack up their ball and go. We were going to autograph it. Well, yeah, this is what it looked like. They had it all full. Then they just kind of let the air out of it and pack it up and take it someplace. They didn't ask us to, but we were going to put a signature on that thing. Oh. Second and three. It was tethered. Now it's smothered. Here's Young again. Swings it out to Brent Jones again. First down at the 16. James Williams made the stop. I see it again. He goes, you know, Brent Jones on the right side. Then he comes back. Brent Jones on the left side. Brent Jones coming in motion. You see him coming in motion. Then he's just going to run up and just stop. But they move him. You know, they put him inside, they put him outside, they put him right, they put him left, and then they do the same play. And if you're a defender, you just got things sort of flashing, crossing in, in front of you. And you don't know where he was going with it. He goes to Logan. Left side for a couple. Les Miller made the stop, along with Williams. Yeah, there's a guy busy. there who was just looking at Bart Oates here, the center for the 49ers that over the years has been a real good football player. In fact, he played for Jim Mora in the USFL and he went to the Giants, played in a couple Super Bowls there. Now he's with the 49ers, got his law degree, passed the bar, was an active lawyer. And those are some of the good things about football. And the guy behind him is also a lawyer who hasn't passed the bar, Steve Young. Put to the right. Swarmed on as you've seen so often happen. If you cover New Orleans, there are a lot of people around the ball. You know, you say, where is Jerry Rice? Jerry Rice is going to start out here with these guys. He's going to start out in the backfield. I think he's the fullback. You see, here he comes in motion. So that that breaks the the backfield, and then he goes out to the right. Steve Young just throws it to him. You know they're going to be up the field, but you don't know where they're going to start from all the time. Third and five. Waters behind Young. The area where he likes to take off with it himself. Incomplete. Flag on the play intended for Rice. A late flag from the far side of the field. And I don't know that they're going to throw it against Vince Buck, but Vince Buck took away that crossing pattern, and I think he had good position on it. Well, if it's against 26, I thought he had good position. Ron Blum. 26 defense at the two-yard line. First and goal. 
you know, you're going to see it right down here in the lower right hand corner but you'll see Buck come in you see him he's just cutting them off I don't think that's pass interference he was just trying to get position there this is Waters out of bounds at about the three you know over the years the Saint defense we talk about how well coached they are but watch how they string this out. I mean, everyone has a lane. There's no place to cut in. There's no place to bounce out. Everyone's playing it right down the line of scrimmage. And the only thing Ricky Waters can do is run out of bounds for a loss. Second and goal at the three. Mike Shanahan's probably saying right now, well, enough of that run. Let's go back to the pass. Well, they can't account for number eight if he decides to run. Well, they did that time, didn't they? They accounted for him. Well, they knew. You know what happens? When they put Floyd in motion, there was no one left in the backfield. So it either had to be a pass or it had to be a, a, a run by Steve Young. Watch this. Here's William Floyd. Now, he's going to go in motion. Now, after he goes in motion, there's no one there to run the ball. Now, if anyone's going to run it, it has to be Steve Young. He ends up running it, but on a scramble. That was a planned pass. That was just good coverage. He was trying to throw to his left, and everything was covered. They go on the other way. Third and goal from the sixth now. Here's Young back to throw it. And he has a man to rice wide open in the end zone. How does he get so open so often? I'm sure that's the question that they're all asking right now, but it has to be a, a zone type of thing where he's being passed off. He's being passed off here. He's being pointed to, but again, you have to attack, I think, that back of the end zone, that back line. The New Orleans Saints were defending the goal line, and Jerry Rice hit him in the back line. His second of the day, Doug Bryan for the extra point. Klaus Wilmsmeyer is the holder. Bart Oates the snapper. Everything is good. And the 49ers recaptured the lead 17-13 over the Saints. Young to right. Yeah, Pat, here's what I was talking about. See, the Saints are defending are defending the goal line and then and then you look Jerry Rice hits him in the back line. Take off sailed down on the near sideline. And is returned by the Saints Derek Ned to about the 28th. 17-13 49ers. You know, watching that touchdown pass again to Jerry Rice, watch Brent Jones thought it was to him. He goes up with one hand, and he deflects the ball. And Rice still makes the touchdown receptor. That used to be illegal. Yeah, I remember uh, when it was illegal. I remember a lot about that. Yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> Ever. Gets it to Haynes, and Haynes is going to be... Gets it out of bounds and gets the St. First Downs. Knocked out of bounds by Plummer. Well, Brent Jones was probably so proud of himself. He was there and he thought he was going to make a one-handed catch. He just deflected it right into Jerry Rice. He said, I thought that ball was to me. You know, but how do you know? I mean, you yeah. don't know where all the other guys are and who's open and what. Well, you, you can't, can't possibly know. No, all, all you see is the quarterback and the ball and try and make a catch. First down, Saints. Everett. Nothing doing. Derek Brown stops. Right now for a McDonald's game break, let's return to James Brown in our Hollywood studio. All right, Pat. Chris Chandler, the Rams, had a big day today. Here he finds, after the play action, Willie Flipper Anderson's 72-yard touchdown pass as Joe Montana is shut out for the first time in his professional career. 16-0 by the Rams. Let's go back to Pat and John. Second and 11 at Candlestick for the Saints. 
Brown and Ned behind Jim Everett. Throw it. Everett goes deep for Haynes. Good coverage. Eric Davis, the defender. Yeah, if you if you look at the the Saints rushing, their running backs have only gained a four yard wide receiver 13 on the reverse, and of course Barnhart on that uh, punt return. That when you come in and you'd like to establish the running game, that's not establishing it. No, it's not. When the game started, there were 23 running backs in the NFL that had gained more yardage than the Saints as a team. That's not a good sign. That puts a lot of pressure on Jim Everett, his receivers, and offensive line. Oh, come up, come up. Pass is complete to Wesley Walls as he's out of bounds in front of the, his old team bench. And the Saints will have to punt. Toy Here's Cook. another old Saint. You know, we talk about Ricky Jackson playing against his old team. Toy Cook. Of course, it's been a starting corner for this New Orleans team for seven years. Barnhart back to punt it. Don't think he'll run this time. I don't think the 49ers will let him run. Good kick. Good kick. Carter's going to let it go. And into the end zone. They'll bring it off back to the 20, where the 49ers will take over. They lead 17-13. The aerial shots of today's game and the surrounding San Francisco area are being provided by the MetLife Blimp Snoopy 2. MetLife Blimp typically cruises at a speed of 35 miles an hour, about 1,200 feet up. Candlestick Park from above. Waters and Logan. Ricky Waters gets the carry, loses a couple. All right, that was an ugly running play. I don't think anyone blocked anyone. Robert Pig Goff made the stop. Yeah, Frank Pollock come out and he fell on the ground, and then Mark Logan was kind of leading. He didn't block anyone. Where old Ricky Waters runs to that left side, and there wasn't a thing there. Jesse Cipolo dressed but not playing. Steve Wallace not playing. Waters in motion. Here's Young back to throw it. Pass is caught by Logan. James Williams shadowing him. You know, Pat, we watch all those guys. You see Jesse Cipolla not playing, and we know that Harris Barton isn't playing. Ralph Tam's not playing. We see Jesse Cipolla dressed but not playing. And, but I still say the guys that are playing are doing a pretty they good are. job. They are. I always think a lot of that credit has to go to coaching and to Bob McKittrick, who does an excellent job of coaching this offensive line. Third and about seven. Here's Young to carry the blitzes after him. Darian Connor came unblocked. Young had no chance. And then he just comes from right here. He's just going to hit out here. It looks like Deese is trying to get out there, but they don't get anyone out on Connor. I mean, he just comes like he's shot out of there. Deese comes awfully late. There's nothing he can do about it. That was a foul up in pass protection. Gary and Connor had a big game last yes, week. He, he did. had four sacks. Third sack by the St. Defense. Wilmsmeyer standing right back at the goal line. Good kick. Hughes takes away from one man, two, gets it to the 45 where the coverage is good. You notice that Hughes didn't have the sunglasses no. on that time. <laughs> one of the 49er cover men must have been 10 yards out of bounds over by the St. Bench. Came back to help on the tackle. 17-13. Watch Nate Singleton. Yeah, you were talking about him. He, he's being doubled. This is Nate Singleton. You have to know your sideline and not pay any attention to it. He gets bumped out of bounds all the way outside the marker, goes around the horn, comes back in, and watch at the end. He's going to get in on that tackle. 
you don't have to worry. You can play American football with Canadian rules if you're one of those cover guys. Look at this bandage, all Madden tricep. <laughs> Stand back. Hi, Mom. And then the most important part of it is, hi, Mom. Those two don't go together, do they? No, yeah, of course they do. Yeah. I mean, Harris, Harris Barton is one of the favorite all Madden people. And, you know, it was Harris, Harris Barton's mom that told him about Deion Sanders because she was coming to that Monday night Raider game, and Deion Sanders was on the same flight as she was. Ever going deep and overthrown. Intended for Haynes. Back there with him, Deion Sanders. So she told Harris that Deion Sanders was going to become a 49er. Yesterday, Deion Sanders told us that he knew that he was going to be a 49er in that Monday night game. And watch you here. Now, this is speed against speed. You see, he gets that hand up there, and then when he needs that little burst, you see it? You know, when we were talking to Michael Haynes last night, he said he thinks that Deion Sanders is the fastest player in the National Football League. as fast as he needs to be. And he was on that play. You see, he got a little behind. He just burst it and bumped it right back there. Nothing doing for Derek Ned. They don't get it back to the line of scrimmage. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. The 49ers 17, the New Orleans Saints 13. Fox NFL Sunday will continue after these messages from your local Fox station. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Maybe the best seats in the house. Bird's eye view, certainly. They're waiting for all the people to leave so they can get the food. And wait until the game's over yeah. here. They swarm this place. Oh, I'll bet. There's all kinds of ways to get around here. I mean, we have trains, we have blimps, we have helicopters. You can have somebody carry on the shoulder. <laughs> Third down. Everett to throw. Incomplete. Win early. The intended receiver, they'll have to punt. Deion Sanders, the good coverage again. Well, you know, Deion Sanders on that one slipped right at the end, but. He's such a good player. Even if he's going to slip, he knows when to slip. He lets the guy get out of bounds. Deion Sanders is a very smart player. In fact, he's staying in there now. I didn't think he even knew that he's on punt return, but not as a return guy. He's out there to hold up their outside guy so they can go on a block. Barnhart back to punt. Sliced it a bit. No penalty to Sanders that got the block. Dexter Carter all the way back to midfield. Sanders just pushed the St. Cover man in the back. And Carter's going back to thank him. Carter ran all the way back there to yell at the official and said he's out of bounds back there. Right. That was, but the block that Sanders got was just a shove from behind. Well, that was his guy. He had this guy man to man all the way, and he got, and he's going to get him right, boom, right there. That was the play that broke Dexter Carter. Now they're going to say that Carter stepped out of bounds on the 25 yard line. Carter said that he did. In fact, Carter's still out there arguing about it. Not going to help. Is that a legal block? It's legal if they don't call. He stepped out. Of, he didn't step out of bounds. Carter's right. He didn't step out of bounds back there in that 25. I don't even think he came close. Bring back instant replay. The officials are over two. Working to be the best. Teammates. Sponsored by the U.S. Army. With both Jerry Rice and Steve Young playing the part of magicians. Rose on the run. He got his own deflection. The San Francisco 49ers are being picked by many to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl this season. Steve Young and Jerry Rice helping to make the 49ers the best they can be. You make the call. Watch this. Well, like you said, they're 0 for 2. There's Deion Sanders. That's illegal. Oh, that's illegal. So the officials missed that one. And watch right here on the 25. They said Dexter Carter was out of bounds. He wasn't even close to being out of bounds at the 25. 
And look, after Barnhart makes that play, he knows. He said, there's no way that I was out of bounds. Good. He was right. He wasn't out of bounds coming or going back. At the 25. Pass intended for Rice. Out of his reach. I wonder if that official who, who had to throw his hat at the 25 meant to throw a flag because of the illegal block and threw the hat for out of bounds because like I said he wasn't close to being out. No of bounds. he wasn't but it was an illegal block. It was twice. I mean he, you're, he trying out him. Him. <laughs> you're trying to help him out. Uh, uh, baby said I saw something I don't know what it was. Brent's throwing something. Second and ten. Here's Young. Swings it out to Waters. Waters. Right now, let's return to James Brown in our Hollywood studio. Pat, the Falcons finally broke the curse of 10 straight losses at Washington and helping the cause this nifty one-handed grab by Bertie Manuel of Jeff George's pass, a 31-yard pass to pay dirt. Atlanta wins it 27 to 20. Back to San Francisco, Pat and John. 17-13 here, the 49ers leading the Saints. We're in the fourth quarter, 14, oh, well, 14 minutes left to play, third and six. Yeah, Singleton is the man in motion. Young, under pressure, and down he goes. Four time he's been sacked today. You know, you don't see that very often. That was... He was looking at one guy all the way. He was trying to go to Brent Jones and Sam Mills was on him. And Darian Connor. And you see he's looking there, he's looking there, and he held the ball too long and he let Connor get there. But half of that sack has to go to Sam Mills for his coverage on Brent Jones, who Steve Young was trying to throw to. Wilms Meyer standing back at the 10, Tyrone Hughes. Back deep for the Saints. No flag. Here's you. Trying to set up the wall. Slip down in front of the 49er bench. And the Saints will take over at their own 37-yard line. Dedrick Dodge. Down on the coverage. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Porsche. Imagine the thrill of having to commute day after day after day. By Blue Cross Blue Shield. Live long. Live well. And by Miller Lite. Great taste, less filling. Can your beer do this? Downtown San Francisco. Beautiful city. Pat Summerall with John Madden at Candlestick Park for the 49ers and the Saints. 49ers leading 17-13. Just over 13 minutes left to play. Jim Everett with a long setback. Here comes the 49er blitz. Everett fires and the pass is caught. Now incomplete as he fell down out of bounds. It was early. Quinn early. My call was early. Uh, Jim Everett knew that it was a, a blitz and he just had to get rid of that ball. Eric Davis has pretty good coverage there. You see him get that arm up there, then that lets him feel Quinn early and then just kind of go out of bounds with him. But so watch Eric Davis get in there, get his arm in there first, then get his hand in there, and then get his whole body in there. And Eric Davis is going to get more and more action because of Deion Sanders. Brown is the lone setback. Everett waved something. Coverage good. Again, it was Eric Davis on Michael Haynes. Eric Davis is a good player. I mean, he's a guy, and just as I said, he's probably going to get more and more passes against him because they're going to stay away from Deion Sanders. But he has that good quickness. He has he has a good jump on the ball, and 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 he has a good feel for man-to-man -man coverage and always getting something in there to knock it out. So it's third and ten. You don't want three and out against the 49ers or against anybody. But especially not against the 49ers. Protection is adequate. I think with the last lunge, Quinn Early got enough for the first down. Crossing. 
And he almost fumbled the ball in yep. doing it because he was right there, right at that first down marker. And then as he had to lunge, it looked like the ball almost popped out of there. Watch the end of it there. Now he knows he knows that he has to get a first down. He needs another couple yards right there. And he goes to turn to get it. And look, the ball almost popped out of there, and then he got it back. I think it was almost kicked out of there, popped out of there by a foot. Almost. By a broken first down. Saints is ever looking behind him. I don't think he saw anybody. Finally he did. Running play is to Derek Nett, who got to midfield only a couple of yards. Nothing doing on the ground for the Saints. Yeah, and you see the guy up there, Tim McDonald, a strong safety. That's the way he became a Pro Bowl strong safety, is playing up at or around the line of scrimmage. And he said that, you know, that's what he has to do. And you're going to see him come up here. Here he is right here and get a good read. Now, if it's a pass, he has to get back. But look at him zero in on that thing when it's a run. I mean, he's just like a missile right there. Talk about closing. Second and eight. Here comes the blitz again. They get it out to Derek Ned. Close to first down yardage. Stepped out of bounds a couple of yards short. Ken Norton out there with him. You know, one of the things this is a the National Football League is a is a passing league but you still have to be able to run to win and you have to be able to stop the run and the Saints are really going to have a, a tough time if they don't get a running game going. We were talking earlier about Bob McKittrick there he is talking to his tackle who he had a start today. Third and one in a situation like this you have to be able to run it. As you said, they're going to be in for a long year if they don't. Everett's going to throw it. Maybe if he has time. Away. Nobody came over. Dennis Brown and Brian Young back to knock Everett down. And there's the example of it right there, Pat, is, is if you can't run, then the play pass isn't going to be effective. And what they were trying to do there is they know they probably couldn't run and pick it up. So they went to fake the run, which is a play pass. But if you can't run, why honor the fake of the run? You look at that offensive line of the Saints. They're big. They average about 300 pounds. They're good athletes. Why can't they run? Here's Ron Hart's punch. High and hanging and into the end zone. They'll bring it back to the 20. So with 10.45 left to play now. 49ers ahead by four. Watch, watch Dion right here. You know, he's only been with the 49ers for one week, so when they say look out and stuff, he doesn't know what to do. I mean, he just hears words. And he starts doing stuff like that. What's that? <laughs> you know, but you only hear a week, and guys yell, look out or get away or something like that. You don't know what the heck's happening. You're he must have thought the ball was going to hit him. Or something. You just yeah. put your hand over your ears, and it's not going to happen. It won't hurt as much. Here's Young back to throw. Inside to Logan. Logan out to the 35. Stopped by James Williams. But not before he gets the San Francisco first down. Yeah, he had Jimmy Spencer out there. He, little, he made a little move on Spencer. Picked up that first down. The 49ers are going without a huddle yeah. now. First down from their own 34. Here's Young to throw it again. He brings it outside. Caught by John Taylor. Right at midfield. Good coverage by Spencer. And again, the 49ers going with no huddle. You just watch John Taylor. The 49ers have really done this a lot today, Pat. Just run this foot pattern. Just run up like you're going and then just turn around and the ball's right there. Catch it on your knees if you have to. First and ten. Rice split to the left. They're about to go to him. Waters instead. To the 45. Picked up five. Again, think, no huddle. Well, this is an interesting uh, uh, thing by Mike Shanahan and the 49ers. You know, sometimes you just want to change the pace of a game. And that's what they're doing right here. You know, and they talked about it before the start of the strike. Let's get get this game over. Let's change the pace right here. Young chase. 
Threw it away. Flag on the play. He did throw it away to keep from losing yardage. He's saying somebody was over there. Well, he's pointing down there to Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice was on that side. That's about all. This is loss of a down as well. Out of the pocket. The pass was to the line of scrimmage. No foul. No Third foul. Down. Yeah, there's no penalty. Remember the rule they put in He's last out of the year. Pocket. If he comes out here, if he gets out outside that pocket, which is where the tight end would be, then it's legal to throw it away. You see, and they said that he was that he was outside of that tackle area. See, that sometimes they say they used to always tell me that it doesn't do any good to argue. Well, here's the case that does some good to argue. You see, once this tackle area right there he's out now then when he throws it away that's legal that's Darian Connor on the pass rush and he is down forty nine er lead is four seventeen thirteen Steve Young's been under pressure well you see they've sacked him four times hurried him eight knocked him down five times one batted one interception and one time they forced him to scramble. Third down. Flag on the play. Young is down again. With Les Miller wrapped around him. I beg your pardon. Not Miller. Carl Lee came on a corner blitz. But the Saints jumped off sides, I believe. And that should be enough for a first down for San Francisco. 97 defense. First down. Ronaldo Turnbull. Jump too soon. There's another way to travel, Pat. We've seen helicopters and boats yep. and trains. And How are you for boats? Yeah, I'm no, I'm fine with boats. It's an airplane. I don't go up. I don't leave the ground. Anything that starts with a B, you're okay. Boats and buses, huh? Incomplete intended Rice. They say it was an interception by Vince Buck. I think he did, Pat. I think Vince Buck caught that ball, intercepted it, fumbled it, recovered it in the end zone, so the Saints will get it on the 20. Let's see. What's it now? He has to have possession as he crosses the plane of the goal line. He, he did. did. He did. So he was in the end zone with possession. Then it's fumbled, then he jumps on it. And it should be the Saints ball on the 20-yard line. Looked as if he thought about it, started to celebrate, and then got up and realized he had the ball. Now it's a fumble. Momentum. The ball will be placed at the point of possession, which is the two-yard line. Oh, what they're saying was that he had possession on the, the two-yard line. Yeah. I thought that he had possession in the end zone. I thought the impetus took him into the end zone. Yeah, but look where, where he gets the possession. When the feet come down, there's one foot down. But I guess he, he is just outside the goal line when he got possession. They give the Saints the ball at the two yard line. Instead of the 20. And the first indication was touchback. And then after further review, the Saints got the ball. Yes, but back at the one yard line. Yeah, I thought it should have been in the 20. I thought, I, too. That, I thought that he had possession and fumble in the end zone. Here's Everett out of the end zone. Got a little bit of room. The ball is loose. Pass was incomplete. Herb Smith, the intended receiver, incomplete. See what Jim Mora, how his reaction is. Not good. Well, he's going to get down there. He's he's saying that the ball should have been in the end zone, yep. and they ought to get the ball in the 20. That was ruled as an incomplete pass, and so it's second down and 10 at the one. Saints backed up. Everett again out of the end zone. Gets it out to Wesley Wall. Wall. Stays on his feet, gets to about the 11 and close to a first down. That would help. 
Lee Woodall made the stop on Walls. Again, Jim Everett has really responded well under pressure today because, like I've always said, the, the best friend of a quarterback is a good running game. Doesn't if have you it. don't have any running game, then it all goes on your shoulders, and Jim Everett is carrying a heavy load today. Third and one. Without a running game. Without a running game. Do you just give up on it? Not yet. He might have gotten it a flag on the play, and that's in the area of holding. And it'll be against the Saints if it is, and that was Lorenzo Neal was the ball carrier. Well, I think what they'll do first is they'll measure it, Pat, because yep. if he didn't get the first down, the 49ers will probably make him punt. They're going to bring out the chain. Yeah, and if they do have a first down, then they'll take the penalty. So if I were the 49ers, we, we'd have a measurement here, and then if they didn't make the first down, you'd refuse the penalty. That's what they're going to do. 7.49 left to play. will turn that penalty down and, 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 and make a pun, I would think. I could be wrong, but I thought they were going to go for it, but no, they're not. No. What's that? Art Demas right here, the umpire. You see him? He's on plumber right here. He was pointing to him like he was admonishing him for something. But the penalty was against the Saints. And that was a good call. You know, have them measure it. Now, if they don't get a first down, make them punt because they can't go for it on first down, on a fourth down down here. Barnhart standing about five yards deep in the end zone. Back at midfield is Dexter Carter. And here's Barnhart's punt. Good one. Chases Carter all the way back to the 34-yard line, but he's got some blockers in front. Flag on the play. Two flags on the play. That's going to be against the 49ers. They caught him on a clip there, a block in the back. That's Mike Stonebreaker who made the stop for the Saints on coverage. And the 49ers know it. I mean, they're going all the way back to huddle, so. I think they may have had a couple illegal blocks from backs or clips or whatever they call it now. Legal block in the back, 36 on the receivers, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. It's Merton Time Hanks. Out. Yeah, that was one. They had one by, by Hanks right there, right at the tackle, and they had another one right there. That was a double dip. It's the same kind of thing that Deion Sanders got away with earlier. That shove in the back. 49ers by four. And now, the all-time top five greatest pigskin players ever. At number five, Jerry Rice, hands like butter. Number four, Dan Fouts, Paul Bunyan with a helmet. Number three, Slinging Sammy Bow, a tailback, quarterback, defensive back, punter. Wow! At number two, Jack Lambert, frankly, because he scares me. And the number one player of all time, Al Del Greco. Congratulations, Al. This is Edwin the Hat Chirvin. See you next week. You don't even want to know about Barry Sanders, man. He does things on the field that uh, just makes your eyes go all crazy. Then one time, I saw him run away two people like a cannonball loose inside a pinball machine. Bing, 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 bing. Yeah. And then, and then Barry did this move. Sometimes I, 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 I still see it when I sleep. And I, I don't sleep that much. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, where safety, reliability, performance, and value are never optional. The MetLife Blimp Snoopy 2 has teamed up with Fox Sports to provide you with a bird's eye view of Candlestick Park in downtown San Francisco. Rick Waters. Stopped and tripped. Got about four. 
Yeah, one thing the the Saint defense has done well today. They've they've contained Ricky Waters of the 49er run, and also the run of Steve Young. The 49ers again go with no huddle here, Pat. But Steve Young really hasn't done much as a runner today, nor have any of the other 49ers really to hurt this defense. Second and five. At the end of the game, John Madden and I'll select the Miller Lite player of the game, and right now I'd say it's uh, pretty difficult to call. Uh, here's Young. To Taylor incomplete. Jimmy Spencer with a good coverage. Now, I'll tell you one thing. I think the 49ers have had the upper hand in most of this game, but the Saints have really hung in there, or the 49ers have let them hang in there. Because you look at the I mean, at you know 17 14 I mean they've been there all day I mean they just sit there and they play you tough and they keep coming after you and you try and get away with it and and, and, and you can't get away from them. third and about five Everett a young stepped up the third and didn't Wayne Martin cleaned up as the two outside men forced him up in the pocket well, you talk about guys MVP. This guy here wasn't bad today, Pat. Right. Because he's been putting pressure on on Steve Young all day. He's been getting in his passing lanes. Here he gets a sack. He just keeps working. I mean, that's one thing about Wayne Martin. He comes and he works the whole play. So back in punt formation is Klaus Wilmsmeyer. Hughes. New Orleans has five sacks. Clock is running. Take a lot of time. Not his best kick. Hughes at about the 28. Oh. And he goes. Tripped up by Troy Wilson. Again, not to take any credit away from the effort by the Saints defense, but look at this remade offensive line. Boat Swain for Barton. Dees for Tam. Dolman for Sapolo. Pollock for Wallace. Four out of the five. And really, I think I think pass protection wise, they've they've done a, a pretty good job today. I mean, not a not a great job, but like I say, I think the Saints hanging in there the way they have and only being four points down, I think is amazing. Sanders followed Haynes to pass underneath. Close to a first down is Haynes. Chased by Sanders. Yeah, one thing that Haynes said yesterday, he said, I know if I get a step on Dion, I think he's fast. But if I get a step on him, he's not going to catch me. Now, this is a crossing pattern. He has a step on him, and Dion did catch him. Second, and a yard, a little visit before the game earlier this afternoon here at Candlestick. Second and one. Finally, Derek Brown gets the first down, running. I bet you that makes the left side of that offensive line feel good. Derek Brown feel good and maybe most of all Jim Everett feel good. Five minutes left to play now. 17-13 with you know four minutes 58 seconds. They have plenty of time but they have to be thinking touchdown. A field goal isn't going to do them any good now. Brown the long setback. Ever take to him. Gets rid of it. To Haynes covered by Sanders. The pressure was put on by Stubblefield. I believe. Lock stop with 441 left to play. 17-13 49ers. If the Saints should somehow win this game, all the teams in the NFC West would be tied at 2-2. The shadow of the blimp overhead, Everett gets it out to his top wall, short of the first down. He gets to just shy of the 50. They need to go about the 49 or 48. Lee Woodall and Gary Plummer made the stop. 
Everett was saying yesterday that Wesley Walls has become his, his favorite receiver. He's throwing more to Quinn early. They feel that they have to get the ball more to Michael Haynes because he can break a big play for you. But of all the guys, the guy that he looks to the most is Wesley Walls. Big target. Third and two. Brown behind Everett. Haynes in motion. And Everett will throw it. Incomplete. Incomplete. Now you almost got to go for it. The guy that made that play is Troy Cook. Yeah, he was he was right there. Troy Cook again, who had been with the Saints for seven years. Watch him, number 41. He's going to come in, get the jump right there. And as he as he hits him and then starts to spin him around, the ball comes out of there. Fourth and two. And the Saints are not going to kick. See, had, if they would have had a running game, they could have run that ball on third down, knowing that they had two downs to get a first. Everett back in the spread formation, not even going to try. As far as the run is concerned, unless he does it, and he's got a lot of room in the first down. Well, you can't depend on your running backs. Do it yourself. Well, he had to there because they had pretty good coverage, but they did give a lane. If you watch him drop back, and you, and you, and, you, and you'll see the lane as the lane develops here. See, he's looking downfield, and now there's nothing there. We just stop it here. You see, they lose their pass rush lanes. The 49ers do, and they give that lane for Jim Everett to run in. If you give him that much room, he can see the first down. First and 10 at the 49 and 45, Everett back to throw, and here comes the blitz, and Everett gets rid of it in a hurry, and he'll get a couple of yards, and that's all. Quinn Early made the reception. He was lucky to get a couple of yards on that and not have a big loss because he held that ball, and he just got rid of it for Early. I'm not exactly why, I'm not exactly sure why Morton Anderson would be kicking field goals here because I think they're going to be down in two minutes. Once they score quickly or get a big play or something, you know, or, or, you know, I can't see a field goal playing in this game right now. Second and eight. Here comes the blitz again. And Everett fires again. Gets the ball to Wesley Walls. And what a catch he made. I can see why he's his favorite guy. <laughs> You know, because, I mean, he likes him because he has great hands, but he's a big target, too. And when you're getting pressure like this and you don't have a running game, look at the pressure. I mean, here comes a blitz. Here comes Woodall free. And it's good to see a big number 85 down there. Whoa. You just throw it out there. He'll make a catch like that for you. That's Wesley Walls being hopefully rejuvenated. And Everett takes a timeout. I beg your pardon, two minute warning. Oh, well, wait a minute. It is a charge timeout. Yeah, he did try and take a timeout and was right at the two minute warning. So they'll put that time back on the clock. So it'll be 2.03. So you'll get one play and then yeah. we'll get the and two minute warning. And then he'll still get the, he'll still get the two minute warning. So in essence, he still has three timeouts. Yeah, again, but with the score 17-13, they're still thinking two things now. Obviously, is, is one is to score a touchdown, but two, to take some time off the clock so that when and if you do score your touchdown, that you don't leave the 49ers any time. Today's game is being produced by Bob Stinner, directed by Sandy Grossman. Studio is produced by Scott Ackerson and directed by Bob Levy. The executive producers of Fox Sports are Ed Gorin and David Hill. And they produced a good one. Yeah, this was, you know, I think the 49ers were big favorites coming into this game. Oh, yeah, they were. And then New Orleans Saint owner this week, Tom Benson, said that the 49ers, what kind of Mickey Mouse organization are they running out there when they signed Deion Sanders and that added some fuel to the fire? And kind of exciting here. <laughs> yeah. George Seifert yes, said yesterday, Good to have a guy named Cap running things, and he meant Carmen Policy, whose initials spell Cap. That seems appropriate. And who probably understands the Cap yeah. better than anyone. Here's Everett. No blitz. A lot of time. Going deep. I think it might have been picked off, intercepted by Merton Hanks. 
Derek Ned was the intended receiver. Merton Hanks came up with the interception at the two minute warning. Everett had a lot of time. And now the 49ers will take over. We have two minutes left. You know, watch Merton Hanks right here. He makes it. He's a free safety now. He'd been the right corner. Deion Sanders is a right corner. Hanks makes a good recovery right here because Ken Norton was playing man to man on that. He was beaten there. Hanks recovered and intercepted it. The Saints take a timeout. Ricky Waters gets a couple. Or maybe he doesn't get that much. That's a pretty good move from the for the 49ers to put a guy like Merton Hanks he can play corner he can play safety and he makes a heck of a reaction I mean he's in here the ball is being thrown deep and he is going to make a reaction back there if you watch him get there because Ken Norton is beaten you see that he has a step on him and Merton Hanks makes up for that step they got on Norton if it's the coverage on Norton Norton on Derek Ned then yeah. it's the same touchdown. And that's what Jim Everett was looking at. I mean, Jim Everett was looking on Derek Ned beating Ken Norton right there. But Merton Hanks was sitting in the middle and reading Jim Everett. And he made a great read, jump, and interception. Saints down to one timeout, 148 left on the game clock. Should get the ball back, the Saints. Stop the clock of change of possession. They can stop it once more with their last time out. Steve Young gets it out to Waters. And Waters tripped up inbound. And now they take their last time out. Sam Mills made the stop. Seventeen, thirteen. Forty Niners lead. The Saints have used their last time out. The Miller Light player of the game, and this was a very, very difficult choice. I think understandably so was Jerry Rice, who scored the two 49er touchdowns. Hey, he had that one big one that that up where he just a hand and a push and a separation and then he had that one in the end zone that was deflected by Brent Jones but I mean Jerry Rice just brings so much to a team that you have to alter and change your whole defense when you play against him third and seven Saints out of timeout um, it out to Brent Jones and it's dropped and they'll have to punt that stops the clock now that hurt because you as you say incomplete pass stops the clock now there's a minute 34 left now a punt will stop the clock change of possession so really the Saints don't have any timeout but because of that incompletion there they get one and they're going to get another one here at change of possession and not bad field position Klaus Wilmsmeyer back to punt it Tyrone Hughes back deep for the Saints Short kick. Flag on the play. Flag on the play. Clock stop now. They've used seven seconds. And and it's going to be against the 49ers. Could back them up some more. Which will be interesting with Jim Mora. Do you take the ball or do you have him kick it over again? Holding. 53 of the kicker, 10 yards from the previous spot, repeat fourth down. Yeah, you see, you have it right here. He has the hold on him. That's what they called right there. And Jim Mora is going to have him punt it again because he's going to have to punt it from 10 yards deeper. And of course, he has, uh, if he so chooses, 
Another shot to block it. Or if he so chooses to return it, another chance to return it. Right. And a dangerous man to do the returning. Rep returning. Returning. Let me take that one over. Maybe I just got a new word. Got off the short kick. Hughes at the 49er 45. Kevin Mitchell. For those of you expecting to see Fortune Hunter, it'll be seen following football except on the West Coast, where it will be seen at its regular time. First and ten Saints, a minute 16 on the game clock. No timeouts remain. Here's Jim Everett back to throw it. Up the middle to Haynes. And Haynes is cut down by Tim McDonald. And they will have to hurry. The clock is running. Uh, he's going to have to get the ball out of bounds. You have to get it to the sideline. Second and eight. Everett up the middle incomplete. That'll stop it. Quinn Early was the intended receiver. Now he has to think about first down and touchdown. Yeah, and and getting the ball out of bounds. So so that's the that's the thing I would think of first is getting a first down and getting out of bounds. So I think you have to use your out patterns, your comebacks, the step towards the sideline so that you can get a first down, catch the ball, and then get out of bounds. I don't think they should be going for the end zone yet. Third down. They need eight for that first. Everett has to get rid of it to avoid the rush put on by Ricky Jackson and Dana Stubblefield and Bryant Young. I don't think they should be throwing the ball in the middle either. I think that you have to get that ball outside. You know that you can't take a sack, but you have to get the ball so that you can get out of bounds. Fourth down. They need eight, and they need to stop the clock. And they better block those two big tackles inside. Everett to throw. His receiver slipped down. It's picked off by Deion Sanders. Sanders is gone. Has, has perfect coverage, jumps in front of the ball, and then after that, he knows what to do with it. Watch out for Merton Hanks there. Merton Hanks looked like he was going after it. Deion Sanders, in addition to being an excellent defensive back, would have made a would have made a heck of a drum major, wouldn't he? I think he'd make a heck of an anything. I, mean, I think he could be a receiver. A, he's a great punt returner, a great kick returner. 
baseball player, base stealer, hitter, whatever you want. Look out for Merton Hanks behind you. Well, he said yesterday when he does all that striding and stuff, he doesn't even know that he does this. You believe that? Yeah, I kind of do. I kind of believe that, that that comes automatic. But that's part of Dion being Dion. Three players gave up part of their salary or deferred some of their money. Harmon policy worked the cap. Every other team in the NFL called the league office and said, okay, explain that salary cap to me one more time. And make sure you got it right. Now explain to me how the 49ers are 20,000 under the cap and signed Deion Sanders. For over a million dollars. Yeah, plus an option for $5 million. Ryan's kick. Handled by Hughes. Down he goes at about the 17th. Well, you have seen some incredible moves on the field today. Let's see what happens tonight when Bud Bundy meets the girl next door. Can the impossible happen? Well, find out tonight on an all new Married with Children. Look where Dion's playing now, Pat. I don't know if back here in the 45 yards, I don't know what this defense is, but you got him in there. He's about 30 yards away from the play. Still, they take congratulations over that return from Martin Hanks. The 49ers have like seven guys up towards the front and three guys back here in the 50. 25 seconds left. And Jim Everett out of the pocket. Throws it to Early, who gets out of bounds at about the 45. Stops the clock with 15 seconds left. Seifer to say, well, I'm glad we got that Deion Sanders guy. He can do a lot of things. And before it's over, he's going to be back there returning kicks, too. And kickoffs, maybe. Well, you know, his, his buddy Dexter Carter's doing that now. Yeah. They were teammates at Florida State. He says, I don't want to take anyone's job. I'd like to do it with him, but I don't want to do it in lieu of him. A big coop move. Yeah, but takes the snap. Flags on the play. And then Dion was trying to get in the offense, and the guys told him there's no place in this offense. Jerry Rice said, You can't you can't be a receiver. Five yards. John Taylor said he couldn't be. Brent Jones told him so Dion says the only position negotiable here is fullback. He said he could he, he could negotiate for the fullback pass patterns. Well he'd be dangerous. Yeah, that would be bad. First and long. They can't stop it now. Ken Norton had a bigger day today. He looked a lot more comfortable. Yes, he did. So the 49ers keep first place in the NFC West. Beat the Saints 24-13. They're 3-1. 